When it comes to such legendary Brazilian players gracing the San Siro, the list goes on and on for the Rossoneri of Milan. This includes the likes of Rivaldo, Kaká, Cafu, R9 Ronaldo, Alexandra Pato, Ronaldinho, Rubinho, and Thiago Silva, just to name a few. We could literally be here for weeks talking about all the Brazilians AC Milan have been lucky enough to have from over the years. It's time to bring one of them back to rebuild Milan from the ground up, bringing them back to their former glory. This time with some Brazilian flair and the AC Milan legend Kaka at the helm in FIFA 19 career mode in an AC Milan Brazil. Rebuild Challenge. So here are the goals and objectives for Kaká in charge of Milan. Number one, the starting 11 of Milan must be all Brazilian players. Number two, he has to sell all non-Brazilian players at the club. Number three, he must win Serie A, Coppa Italia at least once and also the Champions League final which we will go ahead and play. Number four, there is a five season time limit so we need to get all those things done within five seasons. Seasons. And number five, Kaka must return AC Milan back to their former European glory. Let's get into season number one. Now, this was definitely a rebuild challenge in high demand, including heaps of people requesting it, and also AC Milan dominating the community post poll I put up a couple of weeks ago about a potential Brazilian rebuild challenge. Also had PSG in there, but you guys wanted AC Milan, so the people spoke, and I'm here delivering. So we're into season number one, as you can see with Kaka at the helm we've got our little formation here as we only have one Brazilian player and that is probably the perfect player we can go into this rebuild challenge with it is going to be the main man Lucas Paqueta the Brazilian wonder kid joined AC Milan and we're probably just going to give him the captaincy from now is going to lead us in the midfield the young 21 year old obviously has a massive potential but the rest of the players are going to have to be sold the Brazilian invasion is coming to AC Milan and Kaka is going to take them to glory let's hope so anyway and just like in every rebuild challenge or the non-Brazilian players in this case are going to be transfer listed that includes Donnarumma that includes the likes of Suso, Romagnoli, Bonaventura they're all going to have to be sold as well as the players on loan. But you know how season number one is. We're going to have a lot of sales, a lot of purchases. So buckle up. Get ready for an action-packed season number one of the Brazilian Rebuild Challenge. All right, we've got a lot of work to do for season number one. Let's get into the transfer business. So Kaká's made his first Brazilian signing for AC Milan in the Brazilian Revolution. It is going to be the keeper who has just recently won the Premier League. Edison coming from Manchester City. The Brazilian 24-year-old goalkeeper, now 80 six overall comes to AC Milan but the first signing however has come at a cost it is going to be 26 million pounds for him plus Gianluigi Donnarumma he's headed the other way to Manchester City so we had to make a sacrifice but Edison is hopefully going to solidify that goalkeeper spot for the rest of the rebuild welcome to AC Milan and it's a former AC Milan legend coming back to Milan it is going to be Thiago Silva the 33 year old now center back 88 rated it's going to be a very short term signing to improve the defense but the man comes back after a few years at PSG we picked him up for 17.2 million plus Matteo Musa show the Argentinian is headed the other way but Thiago Silva welcome to the Brazilian revolution and it's going to be our first departure of the rebuild the Turkish winger Hakan Shanalogu is off to the Premier League he's off to the Red Devils in Manchester United we ended up selling him for 25.6 million pounds a 24 year old is off to England and our second departure in a row it's going to be Giacomo Bonaventura the Italian midfielder is off to Barcelona to La Liga the 28 year old Italian midfielder Midfielder is departing AC Milan. We ended up selling him for 25.1 million pounds, so two departures pretty much at 25 million. And it's gonna be Ajax Wonder Kid David Neres, the Brazilian winger, 21 years of age, is joining us here at AC Milan under Kaka's wing. He is gonna join us for the Brazilian Revolution. Such a pickup, he is definitely gonna grow heaps in this rebuild challenge. 
and definitely solidify his place in the starting 11. What a pick up David Neres. We ended up picking him up for 11.3 million pounds plus the Spanish right midfielder Samu Castillejo. He's going the other way to Ajax. But David Neres, welcome to the San Siro. And it's going to be another solid marquee signing. Rafinha from Barcelona is going to make the switch to the Rossoneri. A bit of a controversial transfer from Kaká because uh, Rafinha was an ex Inter Milan player so we're gonna ruffle the feathers of the other side of town but he's gonna join us for 24.6 million pounds the 25 year old midfielder 82 overall we picked him up on a bit of a bargain but Barcelona were willing to make the transfer happen hopefully Rafinha can be one of our main stars in the midfield welcome back to the San Siro for the second time this time in red and black and yet again another defensive swap deal this time it is going to be the Valencia defender Gabriel Paulista ex-Arsenal man as well the 27 year old is making his way to AC Milan going to partner Thiago Silva in the back three and it's going to be a welcomed pickup to our defense we picked him up for 15 million pounds plus Caldara he is going to go the other way but Paulista Welcome to the Serie A. And the signings keep on coming. This time it is going to be a striker pickup. Joe Ellington coming from Hoffenheim. The 21-year-old striker. We picked him up on a bit of a cheap. One of our cheapest signings. It is going to be 12 million for the Brazilian striker. He's on his way and joining Kaká for the Brazilian revolution. He's got a bit of a low overall. He's got a decent mid-80s potential. So hopefully he can turn into a decent backup striker. Joe Ellington, welcome to AC Milan. And cult hero Montolivo, the Italian midfielder, is off to the Premier League. He signed for Bournemouth. 3.25 million pounds. The now 33-year-old central defensive midfielder has been on the fringes for quite a while at AC Milan and he's finally made his move this time to another red and black team it's going to be Bournemouth farewell Ricardo Montolivo and it's a triple sale it is going to be a double right back departure though in Ignazio Abate a club legend a cold hero for AC Milan look away Milan fans as also Davide Calabria is off to Dortmund for 17 million pounds a triple Italian departure here 4.7 for Abate as well so and the departures just aren't stopping here at AC Milan and it's going to be Kaká's biggest signing yet, Gabriel Jesus, the Brazilian, the Brazilian wonder kid coming from Manchester City, the 21-year-old striker is going to be leading the line for us this season in the Serie A and is joining us here at the San Siro, what an amazing pick up there, a recent Premier League winner as well and also a Brazilian double swoop of Manchester City, we picked him up 31 million pounds plus Suso, he is headed the other way so the Spanish winger is off to the Premier League. We get Gabriel Jesus. And yet another cheap pickup. Another centre back signing. It is going to be Luis Felipe. I don't know why his shirt has Ramos on it. But I guess we can call him the Brazilian Sergio Ramos. Why not? If he wants to. We got him for £10 million from fellow Serie A club Lazio. And he does actually have a decent potential on him. Still only 21 years of age. But he's going to be one of our starting centre backs in season number one. Luis Felipe. Welcome to the Brazilian Revolution. And it's going to be a small departure here. AC Milan, Italian midfielder, outcast Jose Mauri is off to the Premier League. He's off to Neil Warnock's side in Cardiff City for £3.65 million. Pounds, a 22-year-old who's shown a lot of promise but hasn't gotten enough game time at AC Milan. Has finally found his way out and he's off to the Premier League. Farewell, Jose Mauri. And it is going to be Duvan Zapata's cousin, Christian Zapata, the centre-back, off to Leicester City. Yet another sale to the Premier League for £5.5 million. Pounds, a 31-year-old Colombian finds himself departing to former Premier League champions Leicester City. And it is going to be yet another flurry of departures here. A few quick sales in quick succession. Andrea Conti, the 24-year-old right midfielder, injury prone, is off to Galatasaray. He's off to Turkey for £8.7 million as well as Bertolacci, the Italian midfielder, is off to the French League. He is off to Olympic Lyon for £6.3 million. So the young high potential goalkeeper Alessandro Plizzari, the 18-year-old, is off to Turkey. He's off to Akshikaspor for £1.3 million. That is a bargain pickup for them. 
Milan and Plitzati departs Milan. And it's going to be our biggest signing yet in terms of transfer fee. Alex Tellez, the Brazilian left back coming from Porto. The Portuguese side have given him to us for £40.8 million. Pounds. The now 25-year-old is going to be a kind of makeshift left mid slash left wing back in this three at the back formation. Alex Tayers for the first season is going to be our main left midfielder. I feel like he can fit the role. I feel like he can play it well. And hopefully he can do us some good in season number one. Welcome to Milan, Alex Tayers. And some more departures to continue. It is going to be the Swiss left back, Ricardo Rodriguez. He is off to Napoli, former Serie A club. They pick him up for 22.6 million pounds. A decent departure there for Kaka. Farewell, Ricardo Rodriguez. And this sale definitely hurt a little bit. It is going to be Alessio Romagnoli, the 23-year-old Italian centre-back. He is on his way to Real Madrid for 46.6 million pounds. A huge departure. Massive sale there for AC Milan and he is going to be well and truly missed here at AC Milan. Hopefully it allows us to bring in some more Brazilian talent. Farewell club captain Alessio Romagnoli. And that Romagnoli sale has allowed us to splash the cash on a much needed Brazilian centre back. It is going to be Marquinhos coming from PSG. He's joining Thiago Silva here at the AC Milan Brazilian Revolution. We picked him up for £60.5 million, pounds, our biggest signing to date, and he's going to be a massive addition to the defence and also the midfield. He can play there too if needed. So Marquinhos, the complete defender and midfielder, joins us here at AC Milan. What a signing. And the departure is confirmed for the Argentinian Lucas Biglia. The former Lazio player is off to the Turkish league. He is moving to Fenerbahce for 14.9 million pounds. The now 32 year old 82 overall man has made the move away from Milan. So it's going to be a very short term deadline day signing in the summer transfer window. Fernandinho, yet another Manchester City Brazilian comes and joins us here at AC Milan, this time for 22.3 million pounds, a central defensive midfielder. Yes, I know he's 33, but he's definitely going to help us out during this first season at AC Milan. 87 overall, quality coming into the side. Fernandinho joins us at the Brazilian Revolution under Kaka, and it is going to be our last piece of business before the end of the transfer window. Welcome to AC Milan, Fernandinho. So we've reached the end of deadline day, and what an opening summer a transfer window we spent 270.7 million pounds on new players and we sold 185.2 million pounds worth of players a very busy transfer window indeed but the Brazilian revolution kicks off here at AC Milan we're going to see how they do in season number one but we still somehow have 15 million left in the transfer budget we're going to save that for January and maybe even next season this is how the squad is looking a very solid starting 11 for our first season we're going to check up on them and see how they're doing halfway throughout the season under Kaka. So we're halfway through the Serie A season and it's so far so good for the Brazilians and Kaka as we're sitting top of the Premier League table here. 12 wins, 4 draws and 2 losses. Sitting on 40 points however, our crosstown rivals in Inter Milan are right behind us in 38 points. 2 points behind us. Napoli and Juventus make up the top 4. Torino, Roma and Lazio in there as well and in the relegation zone is going to be Udinese, Empoli and Genoa. We unfortunately took an L in the Supercoppa Nazionale which is like the pre-season tournament, the pre-season trophy against Juventus and we have Carpi in the round of 16 in the Coppa Italia. Our Europa League campaign was rather successful finishing top of our group 15 points in six games, rather successful season there. As we move on to the round of 32, we have AEK Athens, a Greek side in the round of 32 in the knockout rounds. So no January business to report on for season number one. We're going to go into the second half of the season with the same 11 we started with and hopefully they can win a bit of silverware or two. Let's see how the lads perform in the second half of season number one. We continued the form in the second half of season number one and ended up being on top by five points. We win the Scudetto. It's first season success for Kaka and the Brazilian Revolution. 84 points overall, 25 wins, 9 draws and 4 losses. Inter 
finish in second. Meanwhile, Juventus in third and Torino in fourth. Napoli, Fiorentina and Roma make up the top seven. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, it is going to be Genoa, Empoli and Udinese all going to Serie B. We ended up getting knocked out in the semi-finals of the Coppa Italia. 2-1 to Napoli on aggregate. And we ended up getting knocked out of the Europa League. 4-4 on aggregate to Leipzig's away goals. So unfortunately, no European Cup run there. And it's our crosstown rivals into Milan in the final. And before the season ends, we're just going to release Antonio Donnarumma from his contract because... We've been getting heaps of offers for him. We just can't sell him, so we're just going to release him from his contract for 500k. We also got players from loan coming back for season number two. We have to sell. And in his first season, it is going to be the top goal scorer award, the Capo Canonieri Award for Gabriel Jesus. 25 goals in 38 matches, our star player this season. So what a first season it was for the Brazilian Revolution. They got league glory, qualified for the Champions League, didn't do too well in the Europa League and crashed out of the semi finals of the Coppa Italia but season number two we're going to be adding more players selling more players and hopefully improving the squad so we're ready for the Champions League let's get into season number two so this is a side going into season number two we have a total of 126 million pounds to spend on some more Brazilian players hopefully going to increase the depth in the squad we also have a number of players coming back from loan as well so we have a lot of players to sell again it is going to be yet another hectic transfer window so let's get straight into it and our first signing of season number two for the Brazilian Revolution is going to be Everton's Richarlson coming from the Premier League. He is going to be a big striker signing for us. 26.5 million. We're adding some attacking firepower to make an impact in the Champions League and in the cup competitions. The 22-year-old will definitely be a great partner for Gabriel Jesus up top. Welcome to AC Milan, Richarlison. Second signing of season number two and what a signing it is. The golden boy of Brazilian football at the moment, Real Madrid's wonder kid. It is going to be Vinicius Jr. 30.5 million. It's a bargain in my eyes actually because he is going to be an absolute gun in the seasons to come for this rebuild. 18 years of age, the left winger is definitely going to grow and develop over the seasons and I just think that is a brilliant signing for this Brazilian revolution under Kaká. Welcome to AC Milan, Vinicius Jr. Well, we're on a hot streak here, lads. Three signings in a row. This time, it is going to be a backup midfielder, a decent squad rotation player in Wendell. The central midfielder joins us for 18.5 million pounds. He's on his way from Sporting Lisbon and has a decent mid-80s potential, so definitely will be a good backup rotation player for the midfield. Wendell makes his way to the Brazilian Revolution. We can't stop. We won't stop. I feel like Miley Cyrus saying that, but it's going to be Eda Militao. And yes, I know he's on his way to Real Madrid in real life, but he's going to come and join us here. The 21 year old center back slash right back is joining us from FC Porto. Yet another Portuguese league signing. He is joining us for 38.8 million pounds. And what a signing it is for that defense. He's going to slot straight into the center back three. Eda Militao, the Brazilian, welcome to AC Milan. Four signings in a row. And it's our first player departure of season number two. Fabio Borini is off to the Premier League yet again. The former Sunderland man has made the move to Leicester City for 8.1 million pounds. A 28-year-old is back in England. Farewell, Fabio Borini. And it's going to be a bit of a controversial sale here. We have Diego. Diego Laxalt, the Uruguayan left midfielder, is off to the other side of town. He's off to the Nero Azzurri in Inter Milan. 14.5 million for the Uruguayan. He's switching sides. The 26-year-old, 79 overall now. Farewell, Diego Laxalt. And I don't know if the AC Milan fans are going to like that move. And it's back-to-back -back departures. This time, it is going to be Italian ace. AC Milan won the kid Patrick Cutrone. He is off to La Liga, off to Valencia for 32.4 million pounds. The 21-year-old striker has made the switch to Spain and is yet another massive Italian sale from AC Milan. Hopefully, can allow us to go after another Brazilian talent. Farewell. Patrick Cutrone. And it is going to be a minor departure from AC Milan. This time it is going to be Stefan Simic, man from the Czech Republic. Just came back from his loan spell from Frosinone. He is off to the Argentinian leagues. He's made the switch to River Plate. 
for £3.1 million. Farewell, Stefan Simic. So this is going to be the starting 11 going into the Supercoppa Nazionale final, kind of like the Community Shield of Italy. It's going to be the Serie A champions of last season versus the Coppa Italia champions. It's going to be Juventus all over again. So let's see how the Brazilian lads do in this one. And it ends up being 1-1, but we win 4-3 on penalties. What a result for Kaka and the Brazilian boys. We pick up our second piece of silverware after the Scudetto. We Supercoppa Nazionale champion. And we had Simic departing the club. This time, it is finally going to be Strinic departing the club. The left back coming from Croatia, the 32-year-old is off to Fenerbahce. The Turkish league awaits him 2.1 million pounds. Farewell, Strinic. So a massive departure from the club as we have Andre Silva, the man who's come back from his loan spell at Sevilla. Now off to PSG. He's off to Paris for 45.5 million pounds. The 23-year-old Portuguese striker is on his way to Ligue 1. And we've literally broken the bank for our biggest signing yet. It is going to be our marquee man this season. Our big gun. Philippe Coutinho joins us here at AC Milan coming from Barcelona for 86.8 million pounds. We've blown literally three quarters of the transfer budget here all on the one playmaker. Philippe Coutinho, former Inter Milan player as well, so we're ruffling a few feathers there, but he's come under Kaká's wing. Hopefully the 27-year-old can ignite some Champions League success into this side, but AC Milan welcome Philippe Coutinho you beauty. And finally, our Champions League group for this season is about to be revealed from the man picking out the names. And we look it looks like we've been drawn into Group D there. That's a rather fortunate group for us. Ajax, Porto, and Dinamo Zagreb. We all know how well Ajax went in this season's Champions League in real life. Porto and Dinamo Zagreb should be easy enough for us. Hopefully, we can progress out of the group. And here we have a backup defender joining us here. It's going to be Bruno Viana coming from Braga in the Portuguese League. Yet another Portuguese League signing for 16.4 million pounds. He's going to be a backup squad rotation player. The 24-year-old is 79 overall and is going to join Kaká here at the Brazilian Revolution. So we've reached the end of summer transfer deadline day and it was yet as promised another big transfer window. We had 217.5 million million pounds spent and 105.7 million pounds sold. My eyes, a very successful transfer window, a very busy one at that. Kaká, not messing around, doing some great business this window and hopefully that can propel us to some success. This is going to be the side going into season number two, the first half. Let's see how they do. Coutinho obviously starting in there as well as Junior, Richarlson and Jesus up top. Pockets are the captain. So halfway through season number two, and we're sitting in second place, one point behind Juventus at the start of January. Torino and Atalanta making up the top four. Meanwhile, Roma, Lazio, Fiorentina, Napoli and Inter all in that top nine. But it looks like to be another top four finish for the Brazilian boys. Sampdoria, Chievo, Verona and Pescara all in the relegation zone. We've got Cagliari in the round of 16 in the Coppa Italia. And we finish top of our group. Group D in flying colours. 13 points, 4 wins, 1 draw, 1 loss. Ajax getting in second with 11. Dinamo Zagreb go to the Europa League and Porto. Very, very poor campaign from them. Finishing one point in the round of 16, we have Liverpool. So that'll be a very, very tough game. Obviously, Champions League finalists two seasons in a row. So it'll be a big test for the Brazilian boys under Kaka. And would you take a look at this? Kaka's doing so well at AC Milan. The Brazilian and national team have decided to offer him a job. We're just going to go ahead and accept it just to see if there's any other Brazilian talents out there. So we can pretty much switch from our AC Milan 11 to our Brazilian 11 and it's pretty much identical besides one or two players here and there but <laughs> that is just absolutely hilarious. Pretty much the same squad there. We're going to use it to hopefully scout a few more Brazilian talents to bring to the squad as you can literally see all the overalls and that in the national pool but the, for the first time in Rebuild Challenge history we're going to have a national team job. Kaká is taking the helm of Brazil and AC Milan. So yet again, no January business to report on. We didn't have enough money to bring in any players. This is how the squad looks going into the second half of the season. We have some terrible injury news because it is going to be one of our, our main signing this season, Philippe Coutinho. He is out for four months. Our Champions League campaign 
has hit, has had a massive hit there, and our 88 rated star is going to be out for pretty much the rest of the season. And we've reached the end of season number two, and look at that, we've gone back to back in the Serie A. We've won two Scudetto in a row under Kaká, we were in second halfway through, and then we made our last push towards the title, and we end up being back to back champions here, Napoli in there in second, Juventus and Lazio make up the top four, Inter our rivals down in fifth, and then we look at the relegation zone, it's going to be Pescara, Benevento and Parma all going back down to Serie B. And would you look at this, it's going to be a Milan derby for the Coppa Italia final, that is absolutely insane. The Brazilian boys are going to take on into Milan here, as you can see in the semi-finals we beat Napoli, quarter-finals we beat Bologna, and of course in the round of 16 we beat Cagliari 2-1. And in the Champions League we made it all the way to the semi-finals, only being knocked out, only being knocked out to 12-time winners, Real Madrid, Los Blancos are in the final and it sets it up perfectly for an El Clasico. We got the better over Philippe Coutinho's ex-team in Liverpool in the round of 16. We beat Man City 3-2 on aggregate in the quarter-final. Our Champions League Cup run came to an end in the semi-finals. Promising signs from Kaká's debut season in the Champions League as a manager. So this is a side going into the Coppa Italia final up against Inter Milan. It is going to be a massive game. The Derby della Madonnina in the final. And we're pretty battered and bruised from the season, obviously, Coutinho still injured, we have a lot of players suspended, and we're going to go into this one simulating it and seeing how we can do in this game. Hopefully, another piece of silverware comes to Kaká and the Brazilian Revolution, but it's going to be Nain Golan starting off, Rinta getting the first goal in the 12th minute, breaking the deadlock. Oh no, this could turn, this could turn bad. Rich Olsen gets the equaliser right before halftime, that's exactly what we needed going into the break. Can we... Get the second to wrap this one up. Hopefully, we don't go into extra time. Gabriel Jesus, our main man, comes on and gets a goal in the 71st. Can we hold on? Yes, we do. Oh, I was thinking there was going to be a last-minute goal there from Inter. But we hold on to get the 2-1 victory. And the Coppa Italia is ours. Rich Olsen and Gabriel Jesus, the strike partnership, Coming in clutch yet again, nine Golan, unlucky mate. So it's not only a derby win against our most hated rivals, it is in a cup final for silverware. The Coppa Italia is now won by Kaka. The Brazilian revolution only have the Champions League to focus on next season. So Pacata got the most appearances in this season, 61 appearances for him. That is incredible for the Brazilian midfielder, David Neres. Get decent game time in there, 16 goals and 13 assists. Gabriel Jesus with an outstanding season there. 35 goals, our top goal scorer, and 13 assists for the Brazilian marksman. His partner in Richarlson, not doing as well, but still getting some crucial goals in there. Edison got 18 clean sheets. Militao in there doing well. Wendell getting a lot of game time. Rafinha also getting a decent amount. Paulista, Fernandinho, Marquinhos got injured. Coutinho had a decent debut season. He got injured for four months though, so unfortunately couldn't do as much as he would have wanted to, but 12 goals and 8 assists is decent, as well as Joe Ellington getting 10 goals in there. Vinicius Jr., you'd expect a bit more from him, but he still got one goal. So that is going to be it for season number two, a domestic double for Kaká and AC Milan. The Serie A and Coppa Italia now, season three, is all eyes on the Champions League, all focus in Europe. Europe. Hopefully, we can get the job done in season three, if not season number four. Let's get into it. So, we've entered season number three, and it looks like we have a pretty similar budget to season number two. We've got 162 million pounds to play with, so hopefully, we can use it to strengthen the squad and get a bit more depth in in order to go all out for that Champions League title. And finally, the Polish marksman Christoph Piontek Il Pistolero is off to Bayern Munich, our first departure of season number three. We ended up selling him for 54.5 million pounds. What a sale there. He's off to Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. The 25-year-old departed Milan, the ex-Genova man as well. Gotta love his celebration to farewell Christoph Piontek. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The man has finally arrived at the San Siro. It is going to be Neymar Jr., the poster boy 
of Brazilian football for the past five years or so, has made his move from PSG to AC Milan under Kaká's wing. The 92-rated 28-year-old left winger has joined us for £115.2 million in the third season. What a massive signing that is. Our biggest signing to date in terms of transfer fee. We've blown literally half the transfer budget on him. Hopefully, it will pay off, especially in the Champions League. Neymar Jr., welcome to the Brazilian Revolution. You should be leading it mate and it's a bit of a step down from Neymar but it was a signing that had to be done Norberto Neto the Brazilian goalkeeper now 31 years of age joins us from Valencia for 32 million pounds we finally got a backup goalkeeper for Edison, he is going to be our backup keeper, number two, an essential signing we needed to make this season. So it's the man of the moment right now, hat-trick hero in the Champions League semi-final for Tottenham Hotspur. He fired them into the final in real life. Hopefully, he can do so for us in the AC Milan Rebuild Challenge. It's Lucas Moura joining us, 38.5 million pounds. The centre forward now can play on the wings as well. Is going to join us at the Brazilian Revolution. He's at AC Milan, ready to take on the Champions League like he as in real life and hopefully Kaka can guide him to some Champions League glory. Welcome to the club, Lucas Moura. And it's the last non-Brazilian player sold for the rebuild challenge. It is going to be the man who came back on loan from Standard Liège, Alan Halilovic, the Croatian midfielder, who was a wonder kid for a few years now, finally departed ways from AC Milan. He's off to Olympic Lyon for £14.5 million. All right, you know what it is by now. This is the side going into the Copa, uh, the Supercoppa Nazionale up against Inter Milan. Yet another Milan derby here. It's the pre-season silverware, so let's see if we can win it again this time against our rivals. We're going to skip it, and it's a 3-0 comfortable victory for the Brazilian Revolution. Jesus gets a brace and Lucas Paqueta gets on the score sheet. We're two years running Supercopa Nacionale winners. So finally, the club is all Brazilian. The Brazilian takeover has been in full effect now. No more non-Brazilian players at the club. This is the side going into season number three. Very strong, a very solid lineup here of Brazilian players. Hopefully, they can get the job done in season number three. So just when I thought we weren't going to be able to pick up another player in this transfer window, we end up squeezing the budget here for Napoli's Alan, the central midfielder. We picked him up for £33 million, pounds, now 29 years of age. He's going to be a backup midfielder for the defensive positions as well in the midfield. A welcomed addition in the Brazilian Revolution, and we're weakening a fellow Serie A club in the process. A fourth signing of the season, and we'll probably wrap up our transfer business. All right. Right, that's going to wrap up our Season 3 transfer business here on Summer Transfer Deadline Day. It's up uh, £218 million worth of players. We sold £69 million worth of players in Piontek and Halilovic. We bought in four quality pickups, so hopefully that can lead us to some Champions League and European glory in Season number 3. This is our Champions League group going into the third season. We have Chelsea, AS Monaco, and Lokomotiv Moscow, so a pretty challenging group in there and qualify for the knockout round. And it so far so good in the Champions League as we finish top of Group E with Chelsea in second, Monaco in third and Moscow in fourth with zero points. A terrible campaign for them but we're on top, that's all that matters and we get a round of 16 clash up against RB Leipzig from the Bundesliga so surely we can get past them and go further in the competition. Currently sitting in second in Serie A, Torino sitting on top, Juventus and Sassuolo make up the top four. And it looks like Thiago Silva is retiring at the end of the season, the 36 year old. The 36 year old defender is gonna retire here at Milan where he spent most of his prime years. But Thiago Silva, if we are going to win the Champions League with him, it's going to have to be this year. So at the end of season number three, we end up doing the three-peat in the Serie A. Three-time Scudetto winners back to back to back. Finishing on top yet again with 80 points. Juventus, Torino and Lazio make up the top four. Inter, Roma, Sassuolo and Napoli are in the top eight there. Frosinone, Chievo, Verona and Empoli all getting relegated. We're in yet another Coppa Italia final. This time it's up against Juventus second place. So it's first versus second in Serie A for the Coppa Italia. And in the Champions League, we had RB Leipzig in the round of 16. We ended up getting the 4-1 victory there. In the semi-finals, we beat Manchester United 4-3 on aggregate. It was a close one. And we end up booking our place in the Champions League final. And this is actually the perfect Champions League final. Think about it. 
Remember all those years ago, AC Milan versus Liverpool, one of the greatest comebacks in the Champions League finals, as well as Philippe Coutinho's former employers as well. So there's a lot of history riding on this Champions League final, but the Brazilian Revolution and Kaká find themselves in a Champions League final. This is the side going in to face Juventus in the Coppa Italia final. Let's go ahead and simulate it. See if we can win the Coppa Italia. Two years running. Let's simulate it. We end up getting the 1-0 win in extra time. David Neres gets the 93rd minute goal to break the deadlock and win us the Coppa Italia up against Juventus. Yet again, Kaká gets another piece of silverware. And before we get into the Champions League final up against Liverpool, we're going to see who performed the best for us in season number three. It looks like Gabriel Jesus. Had another outstanding season there with 29 goals. Neymar's debut season ended up in 28 goals. Joe Wellington doing pretty well there for a backup striker. And just meanwhile, a lot of mediocre performances, I guess. Richarlson could have done a bit better. Rafinha as well. David Neres, who scored that all-important goal in the Coppa Italia final. Philip Coutinho, not delivering that much, but hopefully he can show up in the Champions League final. Lucas Paqueta, the captain leading by example this is going to be the final squad report before we get into the final as you can see there Thiago Silva retiring but the rest of the players the Brazilian revolution at AC Milan Kaká's boys are ready to win the Champions League they've got a big game ahead of them so hopefully they can deliver on the world stage So yet another Champions League final at Old Trafford. Can we make it eight Champions Leagues for AC Milan? Charleston's going to let us find out. Gives it to Naby Keita. He finds the run of Mohamed Salah, but Edison gets there. Finds David Neres. Paqueta, can he find the run of David Neres? He does. It's a brilliant one-two between the pair, and that is a poor shot from the winger. It's going to be Gabriel Jesus to swing that one in. Richardson was there. It's going to be Felipe Coutinho against his former side. The first shot we've had all game pretty much that has been that has been threatening. It's Felipe Coutinho on the volley. What a finish from the little magician in our midfield. He has gotten us underway here at Old Trafford. Liverpool were all over us in the opening few minutes. It took one dangerous ball and Felipe Coutinho on the edge of the box off the post and in with a brilliant finish. Take a bow, son. On his right foot, absolutely smashes that one into the bottom left-hand corner. Allison could not do anything. And the Brazilian Revolution get off to the perfect start. Kaká would be so proud. 
going to be Neres. Can we get Marquinhos on the end of it? We do, but Allison comfortably save. Curl that one in. It's a beautiful whip. And Allison with a great save there, denying us of the second. An interception. Neymar's put that back into the middle. It's Marquinhos. And another brilliant save from Allison to deny us of the second goal right before halftime. That was a beautiful ball in from Neymar. And Marquinhos' shot was poor in the end, and it went straight at Allison. He's made two game changing saves. Do it again, but Salah wins the ball back. He's going to put it back into the middle through to Pjanic. Pjanic takes a strike. Edison with a great save. He finds a way through. Richarlson gives it off to Coutinho. Richarlson again. What's he going to do? He's going to strike it from distance. It's going to end up to David Neres. It's going to be Richarlson again. And it goes straight to Allison. And that is going to be half time. We were dominating towards the end of the half. We should have grabbed the second, but we didn't. It's going to be 1-0 heading into the second 45. From the him. Gives it off to Marquinhos. He's going to take a strike from distance. And Allison yet again with a brilliant save. With that one in. It's going to be Gabriel Jesus. And he says it's off the post. Oh, so close to the second. Yet again, Gabriel Jesus this time has his header rocketed off the post. He's to play Paqueta. Can he find the right ball through to Coutinho? And it's just wide. All right, so our first sub of the match. It's going to be our right winger, David Neres, coming off for Vinicius Jr. They've crossed it in Liverpool. And we're headed that away, and that is going to be full time. It should have been more, but we end up winning 1-0 in the final few minutes. It was the decisive Coutinho goal in the 21st that would cement our place as Champions League winners. What a result for the Brazilian boys. And Kaká has successfully completed the Brazil Rebuild Challenge with AC Milan, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did, go ahead and enjoy it. Smack the like button. Subscribe for some more FIFA 19 career mode content on the channel. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Comment down below. All that good stuff. I will see you in the next Rebuild video. But I'm going to leave you with some Brazilian Champions League celebrations with AC Milan. It's going to be Lucas Paqueta lifting up that trophy.